Hi. Bohemian Rhapsody. That is the movie I will be talking about this week as soon as I mention that you might be here to see the announcement of Bisexual Representation Awards and also the reveal of the Fluid Style Clothing. That is not happening this week. It'll be pushed to next week. People needed more time. Winners needed more time. I needed more time. So unfortunately, it'll be next week. But next week, you can tune in to this YouTube channel and there will be a chat, a live chat going on starting at 7.30. Uh, I'll be there chatting with you. Um, and then at 8 o'clock, it'll be the reveal of the announcements, which will include some of your favorite winners saying thank you to you. That's super cool. And then it will follow by the reveal of fluid style clothing and the kickoff of the Kickstarter campaign, uh, which will start at that moment. So all very exciting, but that's next week. This week, let's talk about the new release, Bohemian Rhapsody, which just entered theaters. Bohemian Rhapsody is a movie about Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen, his life, his achievements, and ultimately his sexuality and his death. I'm gonna talk about this movie in two ways. First, I'm gonna talk about it as a movie um, and whether or not you should see it. And then I'm gonna talk about the bisexual representation in this movie and how good it is or not good it is. And then we'll go from there. So how is this movie as a movie? As a movie, I'm gonna break that down into two parts. First, as a biography and then just as a general movie. As a biography, I don't, I think it did like a, a okay job. Like I wouldn't say it did a good job as a biography, um, but it did an okay job. I mean, it, it hit the main points of Freddie Mercury's life, but it definitely got some things wrong. It definitely got wrong how Freddie Mercury met his other bandmates. That is incorrect. Uh, it got when um, and how they created We Will Rock You. They, they put it in a different time period. Um, they put it uh, in a different way. And also everything involving, involving uh, Freddie Mercury's diagnosis of HIV and AIDS, that's just, it's just incorrect. It's just not correct at all. And what they did instead, I think, I'm pretty positive, is that they changed the events to create a narrative which will be fulfilling for an audience to watch. So how is the movie as a movie, as a, as a thing you go to theaters to see, to be moved and to, be, uh, to laugh and to cry and all that stuff, as a movie, Bohemian Rhapsody is pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. Like, at, certainly I chuckled multiple times. Uh, certainly there was a time when I was almost moved to tears. Um, I think they could have tweaked the emotion of it a little bit more, but that's, you know, that's hair there. They did a great job. And a lot of people who go and see this movie will be moved by the movie. There's certainly good reason to be moved by the movie. When the songs came on, I had to fight very hard not to sing along. And the person behind me lost that fight on multiple occasions because you know, the, the way the scenes were created and just the music itself just lends itself to just singing along in the theaters. But yeah. So in terms of a movie, in terms of the performance of Rami Malek, who plays Freddie Mercury, very good in terms of his performance, very funny in terms of other, other actors' performances. And the cinematography is beautiful. All that stuff is beautiful. The way the songs are integrated was beautiful. All that stuff was really good. So as a movie perspective, you know, it could have been tweaked here and there to be more emotional and stuff like that. So for that reason, I don't say it's a brilliant movie, but yet it's an enjoyable movie. If you're looking for a good movie that'll make you like want to laugh and want to cry and want to sing along, this is a movie to see. Okay, so that is my review from a movie perspective. How about from a bisexual representation perspective? This won't be as glowing. Now, I think they had a really hard line to walk here because the, the reality is that gay people, especially gay men, spend a lot of money on stuff. And they know that a large part of their audience will be members of the gay community. 
and specifically older members of the gay community. And those older members of the gay community want to see Freddy Icon as a gay icon, not as bisexual, as gay. So how did this movie dance that line from the reality of him being bisexual and the, the desire of gay people to think of him as gay? It did it in a very interesting way. This is not a spoiler, but I am revealing information at this point. So if you want to cut away, then this is the time to do it. But the way they did it was that at one point in the movie, Freddie Mercury is talking to the woman he considers to be the love of his life. The woman he uh, started dating when he was still in college in the band, just before the band even started, he met her, fell in love with her. They had sex. They, you know, were in love for a long time. And at, at the one time when he decides to reveal himself completely to the woman he's in love with or the woman he's loved after giving her a ring that he wants her to wear for the rest of her life, he describes himself, he says, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I'm bisexual. And then Mary, the woman he's talking to, says, Freddie Mercury, you're gay. And I thought that was kind of a brilliant thing to do because what it's doing is it's, a, it's acknowledging the way Freddie Mercury describes himself. Freddie Mercury in the movie says he's bisexual. And then Mary, representing the world, then looks at him and says that he's gay. That was, that was I think, really well handed, really w well dealt with. Now, the, the other reason why I'm not enthusiastically saying this is great bisexual representation is because of another choice that the filmmaker made. And I get it. Like, as a storyteller myself, I understand why they did this. Um, but what they did was they had him, they only showed him in love and having sex with one woman, Mary, the love of his life, and then showed him having sex with an uncountable number of men. So in terms of a bisexual, you walk away from this movie thinking that, no, he wasn't bisexual. This man was gay. Because the only time you ever see him with a woman is that one woman, or having any feelings or any attractions to a woman, is that one woman, and that's it. And they could have done that better. Clearly, they were trying to push the narrative the man was super super into other men just super into other men and you know that doesn't mean he's not a bisexual certainly if you've been watching the channel you know that a bisexual can be a person who just has romantic feelings for one gender and sexual and romantic feelings for another gender that's that's a type of bisexual and a very common type of bisexual so it's not like the movie tries to erase him as a bisexual it just does it's it just emphasizes his attraction to men and it really emphasizes his queerness and by queerness i mean his uh his feeling that he wouldn't he didn't fit comfortably into the norms of society he was super according to the movie super flamboyant which of course he was in real life and um had a sex with a lot of men. That's what you walk away with. And if you're a person who wants to believe that he was actually gay, you can walk away with the feeling that he is actually gay. And if you're a person who, uh, you know, knows he's bisexual, then you get him saying, identifying himself in one way, only one way in the movie, which is bisexual, while the rest of the world keeps looking at him and saying gay. There you have it. Um, from a bisexual perspective, would I recommend you seeing this movie? Hell yes. Hell yes, I would. It, it, it's not the best possible way to represent him as a bisexual, but the, I thought it was very, very powerful hearing him say the words, I am bisexual. I don't, I don't know if I've seen that in another movie in such a way where it's just a close-up and it's an iconic character. So, yes. As a bisexual, I recommend you go see this movie. You will be a little kind of saddened by the complete portrayal of bisexuality, but you will still walk away feeling like, okay, yeah, no, no. I think they did what they could considering the, the um, circumstances around his, li his actual life.
So there you have it. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, next week. So as I said, next week will be uh, finally the announcements of the winners of the Bisexual Representation Awards for 2018. It will include some of the actors that you voted for thanking you uh, for voting for them. So, you know, definitely come and check that out. Also, um, we will do be doing a live chat. I will be doing a live chat. I know there's going to be a lot of people who are anxiously waiting will be on doing a live chat about, you know, who they're hoping they'll win, who they uh, voted for. Um, and then as the video premieres, we'll all watch it together on this YouTube channel, on the page itself. Um, and we'll be commenting as things are announced. And then after the announcements of the winners, I will be revealing for the first time um, the uh, clothing that I've been working on for two years, which I'm so I'm so excited about. I'm sure that you guys are going to love with it. Um, I created, you know, with a Kickstarter campaign, you always have to create a video. So I created a video, which I know if you're watching this channel that you will love involves animation. Um, it's so, it came out so well and I'm, I know you're going to like it. And that's going to be how I'm going to reveal the clothing with that video. So tune in for that. It's, I'm, I couldn't tell you how excited I am. And please, um, important note, if you want there to be a Bisexual Representation Awards next year, uh, support, you know, the Kickstarter campaign because the only way I was able to do uh, the Bisexual Representation Awards the last two years is because of financing from the Bisexual Representation Awards. And I'll only be able to do it next year if you support the Kickstarter campaign. Hopefully you'll want to do it anyway because the clothing is really good and you'll be able to pre-order the clothing with that and it'll arrive in time for Pride next year. So, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, definitely comment next week and check out the video and support the Kickstarter campaign um, when it's announced next week. Um, but you can also check out my t-shirts on Amazon. You can check out my lapel pins on Amazon. You can check out my pop sockets on Amazon. And you can't, cannot check out my books on Amazon anymore, but that's another story and that's not a topic for this channel. So check out those other things on Amazon and definitely tune in next week for the announcement of Bisexual Representation Awards, the reveal of the um, fluid style clothing and a live chat beforehand. That's it. Until next time, uh, subscribe and click on that bell. By clicking on the bell, you'll be telling YouTube that you'd like to know and be reminded of next week's video and when all of my videos come out, which is usually on a Sunday, I try, but you know, click to know, <laughs> click to know for sure. Stay cooler, my bisexual friends. Stay cooler and see you next week. <laughs> Bye.